Hi guys, it's Mina. Welcome back. We're going to do something a little bit different today. Um, I've been dreaming about a black background, so that's what we're going to play with today. And um, this one I'm re-pouring on an older canvas that I poured and didn't really like that much. So, But I really like this canvas. This one is a Masterpiece Pro that uh, is like, I think it's Rembrandt is the name of the company. I'll put the link down for you below. They're kind of expensive, but they're so beautiful. I mean, it's just... It's a lovely, lovely canvas to pour on, so I don't want to waste it. So what we're going to do today is a little bit different. That's my black background. That's Artist Loft Black Flow Acrylic. Let me wipe my hands real quick. And then I will tell you about my colors. So this is going to be some negative space on this. I'm going to kind of do a ribbon pour. Here we go. Okay, so I have my black that I told you about. I have Golden's Anthroquinone Blue, which is a beautiful, lovely color. I have Golden's Copper iridescent fine which is just magical this one is the cobalt that uh, is by goldens very pretty this is the first time i'm using this one so i'm excited to see it with the anthroquinone blue i also have my deco art americana decor metallics in the 24 karat gold and i have deco art emerald green this is the americana decor metallic series emerald green and then I have one more, which I'm not sure I'm going to use or if I'm going to use the green. I haven't quite decided yet. This is the Deep Violet from Golden's. So, small cup today because I don't want to fill up the whole canvas. I deliberately want a lot of negative space. So, this one is, says 250, I think this is 8 ounces. This is one cup. So, that's a 16 by 20, I believe. So, we're just going to kind of go across. So, let's see. We're going to put some of the anthroquinone blue in first because I love that one. And then the copper. And then we're going to go back to the, co the cobalt blue. Which I know somebody has been excited to use. And this is the emerald green. Then we're going to go with some gold. Back to, oh, you know, now I'm going to put some black in. And then I'm going to put some violet in. And then let's go back to the copper. Anthroquinone. Put some gold in there. So that's way more than enough paint, but wow, that's pretty. Okay, so let's put those over there. Move that over there. And pull this over there. Okay. Now that everything's over there. <laughs> here we go. Okay. So this is not... Well, I don't know. I don't know exactly what I'm going to do until I do it. <laughs> More like a straight pour, I guess. Would be the best way to describe this one. But I kind of want those thick ribbons of... I like that cobalt, it's very pretty. And there's the copper. Ooh, that's cool where it mixed with the blue. Ooh, that's neat. Hmm. Okay, so let's look at it for a second before we do anything else to it. I really like that. <laughs> That's really cool. This is interesting. I really like the violet and the black. That makes me happy. I think I want to put more on there on through that because there's some... I don't know. Okay, we're going to go with it. So I'm going to put some black in. Then I'm going to go with the violet. And some gold. And a blue. Some more black. Okay. I'm just going to go through this.
that's really cool and I like that better than that so I'm gonna take this this way I know I'm losing paint off at the bottom but that's okay That's it. I like that a lot. That's really cool. Can you see? Let's torch it real quick because there's some cool cells in there. to bring this down a little bit. Where's the way to the paint? Okay. I'm gonna stop there with that one. I think that was really, really cool. We've got a lot of really cool metallics going on in there. Copper, I guess, didn't really belong, but there's still a little tiny bit of it showing, but that's okay. I like that a lot. So that one's cool. We're gonna do one more real quick. That's the final shot. I'm gonna push this one out of the way. Welcome back to Construction Studios, because <laughs> it wouldn't be complete unless we have construction noises. Uh, we are doing a 15 by 30 canvas today that I'm kind of excited about. I just did two really pretty canvases with a black background and a lot of metallics and I just cleaned my drips off my table and they're in this cup I'm gonna use them as my base coat and I really like doing this because there's so much color in here and there's this beautiful sparkle of metallics in here of course there's also it's a plastic in here apparently too that's actually dried paint from the last time I painted on the table so we're gonna spread this out real quick 
This is gonna add a beautiful luster and sheen to the paint because it has so much metallics in it already. Yay, jackhammers. I think that's the only tool they have. <laughs> There's no hammers or like, it's all construction by jackhammer. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna move this over here so you can see what I'm pouring in here. Get rid of that. Okay, so we're gonna start with a little bit of that backgroundy sort of color, the black with the drips in there. Then I'm gonna put some anthraquinone blue. Then I'm gonna use some golden violet. Then I'm gonna go in with the cobalt blue. And? <laughs> okay, we're gonna put a little gold in there. I'm gonna go back to the violet. Actually, no. I'm gonna use the anthraquinone again. I want the green. I think I'm gonna do the green. Okay, some green in there. We're gonna go back to black, just plain black. And then I'm gonna put some copper in. And then we're gonna go back to that drippy drag stuff. And I wanna go back to gold. And then anthracene blue. Cobalt. So that's 16 ounces right there. Okay. I'm going to end it with a little bit more gold. And whatever I have left of my drips. Okay, so let's move all those out of the way and bring this back. Okay, spread this out a little bit. See, there's still a lot of paint on here. It's moving nice and easy. Take it off the edge real quick. Nice smooth surface to work on. Here we go. So we're going to do sort of like a, a straight pour across the canvas. Sort of that ribbon candy effect. Okay. All right. So let's see. I'm going to put a little bit of black around this edge because I don't want to lose this. I like this part. So I'm just going to put some black around here so it has definitely something to slide on easily. Okay. So this is pretty cool. I like this better than this, but I want to spread this out a little bit. I do want some negative space, so I'm not so concerned about covering every inch of the canvas. But I like this part a lot up here. How pretty that is. So we're just going to kind of spread that out a little bit and take it down towards that edge. And I know it looks squished now, but don't worry, it'll be okay. I hope. <laughs> Might get it to go the other way. Get our paint over there. Grab onto that corner and we're gonna come back. Something That 
like the green. Let me take that green off. So don't kill me, but I'm going to use this as a base coat. This is really cute over here, actually. Let's see. What do we have here? I like that anthroquinone and violet together a lot. So I want to put that in with the gold. need any more on here because this is pretty neat. I like the cells that popped up. Those are really cool. I like this that's going on here and there's just a little bit of the copper so it's not like crazy bright. What do you think? Keep going or leave it? Hey, ma'am. Hit it! Hooray! Keep, leave it. All right, well, we'll leave it. Because I did want the negative space, and I do like all the little cells that are coming up. <clears throat> and there's nothing on it that's really bothering me. So I'm going to torch it real quick, and then we'll take a look and see what's happening. So this is one reason why I do test canvases because I don't like this as, as an artist. I don't like feeling like I've done something on a canvas that I don't like and it's, you know, I, that's the waste um, of the paint to me if I don't like something. I, I really don't enjoy re-pouring over canvases because there's risks and your paint might crack or, you know, 10,000 things could happen. So I try to do test canvases on smaller pieces, you know, 10 by 10s board canvases, things like that, before I pour on something that was a bigger and more expensive canvas. But there is some cool stuff going on in here, and I really do like those little floaty pearl cells. So I'm going to leave this one alone. I'm going to torch it real quick, and we'll see what happens. <sighs> That's it for that one. Um, can you give me one of those little squares? I've got paint in my cup now. <laughs> I don't want to use it off. Ooh, that's so pretty. Look at those drips. See, and I will scrape that into a cup and use it for something else. This one. Thank you. Okay, so this is just a canvas board that I cut up into little pieces, and I'm literally just going to pour my paint right on there. Get rid of that part where I gripped it messy.
That's it. So, you know, test. Because then you don't end up wasting a big good canvas. You figure out what you like and you can read these like a book. You can see where, what colors you put in and see how you like what it's next to this light blue I like it, when it's next to the dark blue I don't like it. You know, you can figure that out. So, test. That's like what? Maybe an ounce of paint? So, anyways. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. <laughs> These ones. <laughs> and uh, I'll show you everything when it's dry too. Okay, so this is the dry one over here. I see a dragon. I see his head and his face and his eye right there. <laughs> and his little snout. Very cute. I like this one. Really turned out neat, especially this part in here where the violet mixed with that black and the gold. That's just super blingy. So this one has not been varnished. I will show you the other one, which I have varnished. But even without being varnished, you see the shine on it. And that is from the gloss medium and varnish. The Liquitex gloss medium and varnish pouring medium. So it has sparkle to it. It has a shine to it. It has a beautiful sheen. Like look in here, it's so pretty. That's the gorgeous part. Like I love those little cells. So that's part of the reason for the gloss medium and varnish use. The other part is if I'm using it for a really big canvas, I don't always necessarily feel like I have to varnish it afterwards because it already has a beautiful luster to it. I can just hit it with some spray varnish and not have to worry about the liquid because the liquid does come with its own challenges. You know, <laughs> you can do it perfectly and last second before it's dry, a bug flies into it decides to crawl so you never know so it's challenging so if you can take steps to minimize the risks that's awesome anyways I'll show you the next one this one's really cool okay so this is a couple of days actually no <laughs> it's more than a couple of days uh, this is a while later I have varnished this one too because I really wanted to see that bling and that gold and it worked <laughs> so that's really cool um, I'm very happy with how this one turned out and this is just it's so funny to me because I was literally ready to pour over it and then I stopped and really looked at it and I'm glad I did so <laughs> make sure you stop and look at your stuff look at these cells up here they're so cool that's amazing I love this corner it's just So, that's fun. <laughs> this part's really, really neat too. Very, very blingy. Okay, the wind wants to take it. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. I will see you for the next one. Have a great day. Bye.